I'm Anita Gavinson. And I'm Kim Siebold Catron. And this is a very icy edition of Ask Anita. So okay. We're at Iceworks in Aston, Pennsylvania, part of my Pennsylvania trip. Uh, been here so long, done so many things, but I've never done anything like this before. Uh, I've come to this ice rink today on behalf of my very good friend Val. Everybody calls her Val. Valerie uh, is her real name. And Valerie and I have been friends for decades, even though she's still very young. I don't know how she pulls that <laughs> off. But we met in 1979 at WCOZ in Boston. And uh, she's been like my little sis ever since. And now she is a beautiful daughter of her own who is skating and being coached by this Olympic famous, fabulous girl that I've just met today. So I thought we've got to roll the cameras and have you get to know Kim a little better. And uh, we thought we'd talk a little bit about what it's like when you are a child trying to achieve your dreams, whether it's skating or any of the other activities that parents send their kids out to do. You see, I know nothing about any of this. Kim having two children of her own and skating with her brother uh, for the 19, with, I guess it was 1988. Yep. When you were out there and uh, sent to the Olympics, I believe I watched your silver medal performance. I think I watched that at home. I, when I saw it on YouTube, I'm pretty sure I was sitting there watching it. And you don't look a day older. Oh, thank you. Really you really <laughs> don't. No, you don't. And I know you've been through your own problems in your life, but how do you think you have managed to just stay true to the course, never giving up, whether it was a physical problem or whether... You know, you you and your brother maybe weren't achieving your goal as fast. What would you say to the young kids out there if they really want an Olympic dream? How do you how do you go about that and not give up? Well, I mean, if you really want any kind of dream, Olympic or scholastic or whatever it is, you just have to never give up. And you have to work hard. You have to be dedicated. You have to be willing to sacrifice along the way. Um, I think one of the biggest things that maybe my daughter is learning is her daughters are learning is that you know if you really want something it's hard work number one but number two it's you know when you get invited to go to this party or that party or do this after school activity you have to choose your activity over that and I think that's the hardest thing is just being dedicated and staying true to what you want to do and not caving to what your friends want you to do which is very tough especially when you're growing up and the, the whole click yes. is going to the dance and you're you have to be careful because right. you need to dedicate yourself to skating. But when you know your talent, when did you know that you were super talented and, and you had Olympic potential? What age? Well, I think it was probably in, in 1982 was our big one. So I must have been 16 then. And uh, we had, my brother and I won the junior nationals. And I think at that point we were like, okay, if we work really, really hard, we might be able to achieve what we really want to achieve. Before then, I mean, I, I think, you know, we knew we were talented because we could coach and tell us, and, um, you know, if you really work hard and you really do this. But I think our dedication really started at that point to know that, wow, this could really come true. So you were working hard, but you started to see some natural ability that maybe the other kids lacked. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So when you started working with uh, my friend's daughter, Gloria, had she not had those natural skills as her coach, you would have to be honest with the parent at that point and say, listen, you know, it would be great for her to continue to do something like this, but don't expect Olympic, you know, don't, you don't quash their dreams, but how do you keep it realistic for them? Well, I mean, I think my, my big thing is that you always, whatever their big long-term dream is, whether it's Olympics or nationals or whatever it is, you never tell them they can't achieve that. You can tell them that there be are many, many that there are many, many, many people trying to achieve that same goal, and if you work really hard, you might be able to achieve that. But you don't want to squash anybody's dreams, so you just keep, you know, getting them to the next level, and the next level, and the next level. And at some point, then they figure it out along the way. Okay, is is my dream still this, or is it going to go in this direction now? And you just try to help them steer them in the right direction that you think that is best for them. So they could, be, they could achieve at least their own uh, best. Right. It might exactly. not be an Olympic best, right. but it's their own version right. of the best, of the best yes. thing. Now tell me about, um, I know Val was telling me that children start at this age, at a very young age now. I see them wearing the helmets and it's maybe earlier than ever before. How do you know what, 
too young. But, you know, I, I see, I read about uh, parents teaching their kids to swim by sort of just throwing them in, throw them in there. <laughs> I wasn't going to say. Yeah. You can't really just do that. How, yeah. how, how do you know if they're too young to start? Um, for me as a coach, if I have a, a child out there who's just kicking and screaming and doesn't want to be out there and won't stand up and won't do anything, I just tell the parents, you know, maybe you should come back and like six months or a year right. um, and then you have kids who get out there and just take off wow. and just you know so I, it really depends on the child and each and each child and you know some of the kids love the skating they love flying around the ice and some just don't want to be cold and they don't want that to would be it. that would have been me <laughs> so it, it really you know I, at that age I'm usually pretty honest that you know I don't really think your child is ready for this yet and you know, maybe bring them back and try something else. And I even have kids that I will teach for a year who just seem to kind of lose interest. And I'll say to the parent, "Why don't you keep them skating maybe once a week, but try other activities too?" Right. And then there's if something they come else back, for this child. Right. Then you'll right. know this is what they love. If they don't, then you know they never loved it. They never loved it. And you have to love it. You have to love it. Yeah. Crossovers. Okay. Bend your knees. Bigger circle. Come on, faster. Okay. So when you get to the very end, you're when they're fast and you're doing the fast crossovers, you always slow down there. Yes. And the idea is to keep your feet moving the whole time. And then you get to the very last crossover, you start making the circle smaller rather than keeping it big, and then you slow down on the last crossover. So you have to make sure you keep your speed going and don't slow down. Okay. Otherwise, that was pretty good. Ice rink. I mean, this is what I do when Gloria's skating. Well, this is now. This could bring me to the ice rink there every you day. Go. <laughs> Tell that woman to shut up. We're not inserting money. I'm pretending I'm having a massage. Okay, well, I think we have to say goodbye, though. All right. That, yeah. She's not going to stop. All right. Well, we're going to get like serious. Money. Siri. Our Siri massage should be chair. And uh, we'll just say goodbye from Val and me and the woman in the chair. And ask Anita. And uh, see you next time. Bye.